deeply honored to have with us on the nation's music station, much music, much west, the Rio Statics, as they sit here, beautiful. I want to let you know that they received, was it 10 standing ovations when you played here in Vancouver? Uh, Something like that? Yeah, it was 11. We're still waiting to be named honorary citizens like we were in Melville, Saskatchewan. Um, now, they're here. We're visiting the set of whale music here on Much West. And these guys, you look at them and you think, try to stay with me. You look at them and think, hey, what are they, loggers? Are they musicians? But no, <laughs> they're in fact movie stars and they're doing the music for whale music. Um, tell them about whale music, the book, the music, the film. It was written by Paul Corrington, a Torontonian, and he used to play bass for Joe Hall in the Continental Drift. Great guy, excellent guy, great writer, our friend. He read at our Bathurst Street Theatre Whale Music concert last year, and uh, he wrote the screenplay with the director Richard Lewis, who's a pretty good guy too. He is. It? Mm. Well, so so then they asked us to do the music for for this movie, so we did. <laughs> on and demand. On demand, yeah. Mm. Like. Uh, like the, the songs that are in the book, like the, uh, these these op opi, uh, <laughs> song of flight, song of congregation, song of fear, and we we took certain. It wasn't a song of fear. <laughs> yes, there was. <laughs> danger. <laughs> danger. Danger. Oh, danger. Yeah, and uh, we took themes that we have and songs and worked them in in a few weeks into these pieces that are going to appear in the movie. Including some period pieces <laughs> like the the Howell Brothers' last big hit. This is the band in the movie. Mm. Yeah, the Howell Brothers. And their last big hit was called. Uh, Torque Torque. No, that was their first big oh. hit. Their last one was called Hunger in the Moonlight. How did it chart this particular uh, hit? Uh, number mm -hmm. one. They the, were all number ones, uh, weren't they? Oh yeah, all around the world. So you were Apparently. required to write a number one hit <laughs> for television for movies. Yeah. Huh. It was easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what is he going to talk That's about? That's Tim. What's he going to talk uh, about? The film. The film. Um, written, uh, screenplay written by Paul Corrington and Richard Lewis, and uh, filmed here in Vancouver and out on Howe Sound. Yes. Starring Maury Chaikin as Desmond Howell, and other people I'm afraid I don't know who's <laughs> playing whom, but um, yeah, and it's going to, you know. It's going to be a smash. It's going to. You're going to see it in theaters and on TV <laughs> and stuff. Can we talk about your signing? We signed with Sire Records of New York City, uh, international That's conglomerate cool. and magnet. That's so cool. Is that cool? That's so you cool. You know why I think it's cool? I, is hope, it, I hope it is. Yeah. I, I, I hope it is too, but I, it's cool for me because all the bands that I really was weaned on were Sire Records bands. Like, like Robin uh, Gristle? No. They were in Sire? No. No. Like, uh, you know, Talking Heads and Blondie and, and uh, the Ramones. The way we look at it is we're allowing them to be part of our Canadian dream. We're lo allowing Sire Records to be part of this great Canadian cosmic conscious busting experience. Junkhouse would say, that's very round. <laughs> that's very round. Which They're I very round. Very Tom is round. very round. They are. We've been talking with the Rio Statics here, uh, poolside at UBC, and uh, gentlemen, we want to thank you so much for oh, talking pleasure. to us. Um, what video can we play? What can we play from the vast repertoire? You, do you have to play one of ours? No. Could but you play? Well, sure, go ahead. Well, you, oh, well, could you play Prince by the Inbreds? Yes, that's a band from Kingston. Yeah. yeah. Cool. They're, they're our best. They're the best. Cool. They're the greatest. And the, go play them. Terry? Kingston, the yeah. center of rock and roll in Canada. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. You've just jumped out of this this limo here. Yes, I running, have. Running, uh, running. Your character is running after Maury Jake. Chasing after Desmond. That's what I'm doing. Who is Sorry, Desmond? And who is who is your character? Desmond Howell is a uh, great musician who's gone into seclusion. He has. Um, I'm his uh, producer, his music producer. He has created some new music, and uh, I have the rights to it. And he is trying to tell me that I don't. He's jumped out of the limo. I don't know where he's going. He's run back into his mansion, chasing after him. I he's only... in a bathrobe. Yes, he is. He's a very eccentric character. Desmond! Going up! Desmond! There was some talk that, uh, that, um, the, that the story was inspired by what happened to Brian Wilson. Um, I'm not an expert on Brian Wilson, nor did I actually do any research on him. But um, I think... The character of Desmond Howell, uh, the situation was the same, and maybe some of the pain and, and the agony that, that the character went through was the same, but the personality of the character itself is very much Paul Quarrington's.
I think it's probably more like Paul Corrington than like uh, Brian Wilson. <laughs> 99 take five. I've been in places, okay, where people work like dogs just to get through the day. Where it goddamn near kills them just to get up and make breakfast and go play ping pong in the rec room, but they do it, Des. They do it because the name of the game is making it through until dinner. There are going to be whales in this film, aren't there? And you're going to do a, your fair share of swimming. Or will you actually? Do I swimming? have done already, and, and uh, for the last the last week of shooting, we have um, uh, I think uh, a full week of uh, special effects photography, which involves swimming in tank uh, in, in a, uh, a heated water tank, mm -hmm. um, and uh, then the swimming with the actually swimming with the whales, which will appear in the in the movie, is going to be uh, I guess what they call mat shots mm -hmm. of footage of whales and putting me in there with them and following them and then following me and winking at me and me smiling at them and all kinds of stuff. You got something? Yeah. This is wide open, you got there on the, on the lens? And it's, uh, the iris is wide open. Yeah. What we're attempting to do tonight is uh, some mat shots, optical mats, where we place uh, the actor, Maury Chaikin, uh, within stock footage of the whales. And uh, here you can see the uh, kind of a shitty, uh, excuse me, a terrible image of, uh, the, uh, of the whales here. But um, it's good enough for us to see that the area in which we want to put Maury. Okay. Who's the audience for it? Who will, because the real statics are doing the music, as I understand. That's right. So we have maybe a cross-generational thing going on. We do, but I, it, it can't cross too young because of a lot of the language in the film. And there's a certain amount of nudity as well, which will, you know, we've got some, some work to do on the film for a television version of it. But um, it's definitely uh, skewed slightly older, and uh, you know, but it's just definitely got a hip angle to it with the real statics and those kind of things. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not traditional or conservative fare, that's for sure. When I hear this music, Desmond, I hear magnificence, munificence, majesty. I do not hear money. Paul Korn, I don't think Paul Quarantine's been translated, which is, but I know it's one of his great, the greatest. One of his greatest goals is to be translated into French uh, or Italian or Portuguese. Um, so hopefully, I mean, you know, he really is one of Canada's, one of English Canada's greatest writers for sure. So, and I'm sure the stuff would translate because his themes are universal. Um, and he's a very funny writer too. So, uh, what's your name? Claire. Claire was my mother's name. We recorded an album called Whale Music. Uh, after the book by Paul Quarrington. And then we found out uh, a year later that it was being going to be developed into a film. And we kind of thought secretly it would be nice to do the music, but didn't really know go, how to go about approaching the producers. But fortunately enough for us, they approached us and asked, us, asked if we wanted to actually write the whale music that the character Desmond Howell creates in the film. Yeah. Desmond Howell's a, an aging rock star. He used to be a big famous rock star in the late 60s, and his brother was in a crash. And he, it's him sort of coming to terms with dealing with his brother's crash. And this is after he went through hard times, addicted to drugs and stuff. And he basically lies in bed like Brian Wilson kind of does, and, and dreams about writing music for whales. And then one day this young woman, Claire, breaks into his house to steal stuff, and then becomes endeared to him. And then this Desmond slowly comes out of his shell in the film, and it's a love story. And, you know, she leaves, and then... I won't, I, I'll save the ending for when you can see it, but it's, it's a happy ending. Have you seen the movie? And what is it like? Uh, awesome uh, soundtrack. 